Welcome back to Your Life. We're in Annapolis Junction, Maryland for a tail end story that's very dear to my heart. My six year old dog, Buka, here injured her right leg several weeks ago. And after trying a long list of conservative treatment methods and watching her hobble around on three legs, I decided to bring her here to the experts at the Veterinary Orthopedic Sports Medicine Group to see what was really going on. And they confirmed that she did tear her cranial cruciate ligament, which is the same as our ACL. And they also confirmed that that right rear leg injury is affecting her other joints now. And it was not an easy decision, but I decided to take her into the operating room today to hopefully give her a new leash on life. Buka is one of Dr. Sherman Knapp's first surgical cases today. She's scheduled for an innovative procedure to repair one of the most common orthopedic injuries seen in dogs, a torn cranial cruciate ligament, which is equivalent to a human ACL tear. A tear we hear a lot about in sports news. But with dogs, due to the shape or slope of their knee joint, this can be a challenging repair, especially for active dogs. The top of a dog's tibia is very steep, almost like, think of it like parking your car on a hill. Exactly. And here's your car, the top part of the femur. Well, the ACL, which you can't see, or the CCL, which you can't see in the dog's knee here, keeps this femur from sliding down that hill. Well, once that CCL starts to deteriorate or break down, there's a shifting that occurs. So the femur is going to slide down the tibia, and that pushes that tibia forward. If you joined us last week, I brought Buka to one of the top comprehensive orthopedic surgery and rehabilitation centers in the country for a second opinion. After being told from a general veterinarian that her sudden limping could be anything from osteoarthritis, ligament tear, to even cancer, I needed to know what was really going on with my six-year-old furry friend. No signs of osteoarthritis in this knee, no signs of, of neoplasia or cancer anywhere. That's just a little bit of shadowing, um, very clean. After a thorough examination, it was confirmed Buka did indeed blow out her cranial cruciate ligament, one of the most important ligaments when it comes to stabilizing the knee. Good, pleasant dreams, okay? With my surgical training, Dr. Knapp invited me to scrub in and assist on Buka's case. Well, this is the first veterinary case I'm scrubbing in on Doc, and um, it's never easy. As you know, I'm sure you see a lot of docs that come through here with their own dogs that it's hard. It is hard. Um, it's it, even for, for veterinarians um, that come through and it's their own dogs. You know, they, they're used to doing surgery on a daily basis, and they come in here and all of a sudden it's their own. You know, it's their, what we call it's their kid. Through a small incision, we get an inside look of Buka's knee joint. Her bones look healthy, but you could clearly see the torn ligament. There's the ACL tear right there. It's starting to get a little ratty. Oh, wow. And the further we work our way up, now you can start seeing where it's actually torn. To stabilize Buka's knee, we are actually doing a bone reshaping procedure called a tibial plateau leveling osteotomy. Now you may ask, why change the shape of her bone to fix a torn ligament? We've made great strides over the years, you know, as far as correcting what we call in people ACL or in the dog CCL or cranial crucial ligament ruptures. Um, years and years ago, they first started out with grafts, just like they do today in, in humans. Um, the graft technique just didn't work that well. The dog's knee is a little bit different than, than a person's knee. And so biomechanically, I think it was a, a great idea back in the day, but it just didn't seem to last. They try to replace that with a nylon technique. We call it the lateral suture or um, extracapsular stabilization. We still will use that technique to this day. Usually it's in the smaller dogs, the less active dogs. The problem is the CCL on a dog's knee is very, very strong. So anything you try to mimic it with needs to be as strong, if not stronger, than the original CCL. So think of this like your car being parked on a hill. Without the emergency brake, it just wants to slide down the hill. The CCL is the emergency brake. It keeps your, your car from sliding down the hill. Now that your dog, Buka, has injured that, we want to slide down. That's uncomfortable. That's why you see them offload or sit with the leg out to the side or even carry the leg when they're running and jumping and playing. Well, if we can take this hill and make it a flat parking lot, we take away the need for the emergency brake. So it's sort of like moving from San Francisco to Kansas. It usually takes about eight weeks for the cut in the bone to heal. To help speed up Buka's recovery, we're applying this 
putty-like synthetic bone graft to the surgical site. With the console putty, what you'll do is take what we call a freer, it looks like a little spatula essentially, and you smear it almost like peanut butter, just spreading it on a sandwich, and you'll coat the surfaces of the bone, and then you rotate the bone and bring these two sections of the osteotomy together. And this will act like a scaffold, basically, and allow those bone cells or osteocytes and so forth to kind of migrate across. And the studies that have been done so far looking at the console products have shown an increase in bone healing. And uh, so anything we can do to speed the rate of recovery, return early function, um, is, is really best for our veterinary patients. On these post-op films, you can see the stainless steel plate and screws holding Buka's bone in place to help it heal well. As for the healing process, for some reason, I think this is going to be the tough part, trying to slow this pup down when she comes home. Obviously, they function really well with this procedure. This is a procedure that, again, the nice thing about this is we have long-term data. This has been out since the late 80s, early 90s, um, and it's proven itself. This is a procedure that we've done three clinical trials on. I've done over 1,600 of these um, just myself here at the OSM, and not including my associate surgeons. The good thing is that we know the outcome. So if we have a police dog come in, a search and rescue dog, CIA dog, a uh, field trial dog, a uh, frisbee dog, um, anyone that wants to get back to 100% full recovery and function, we know in our hands this is the procedure we can reach for and get them back out to, to enjoy their life again. Well, Vuga's surgery was a success, but now the real work begins, the rehabilitation. And we're going to be following her progress here weekly on Your Life over the next several months. We're also going to be highlighting some of the latest technologies when it comes to veterinary medicine. Be sure to tune in weekly. Also, be sure to check out our website, yourlifetv.com. Remember, it's your life. Live it well. We'll see you next week. Fachi high five.